All right, I want to dive into sections 1.1 and 1.2 with you. We're going to be talking about functions of real numbers. And so I thought before we dive into functions, we should take a few minutes and reveal, review the real number system. And so to do that, I actually want to start with a smaller set of numbers. These are called the natural numbers. And uh, we usually use the, whoops, the uh, symbol double bar n to indicate the natural numbers. And so we would say the natural numbers are the set of numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, so on and so forth. Depending on who you ask, people may or may not put zero in there. Some people, uh, you've probably seen in college algebra, people refer to the whole numbers as the naturals union zero. I'm not going to write that down. For our purposes, the naturals. And then the next set that we care about is the integers. So the integers uh, we usually denote by z, and this would be the set of all the naturals, throw in zero, throw in the negative. So we'll, we'll write that dot, 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 negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three, so on and so forth. That's a very bad squiggle, but we'll just erase it. Do another one. Okay. So the naturals are just the positive starting at one. The integers are the naturals, their negatives, and zero. And then the next set of numbers that we're interested in, whoops, are the rational numbers. So the rationals we usually denote with a Q. And this is the set of, well, it's a little harder to write, but it's the set of all fractions, all A over B, such that A and B are integers. And of course, we don't want B to be zero. So you should think, man, I, I can't get that right squiggly. Uh, you should think about this as the set of all fractions. And so we'll write that down. Okay. And so that brings us to the real numbers. So uh, the real numbers, which we're going to denote by R, we usually put double bars on these things. The real numbers are the rationals. Uh, plus the irrationals. And so if you'll recall with me briefly, uh, wow, man, I am not spelling well today at all. I don't know what's going on. Let's try that again. Uh, the rationals, there we go. Uh, the real numbers are the rationals plus the irrationals. The rationals are all the numbers that you can write as a fraction. And if you want to think in terms of decimals, they're all the numbers whose decimals either terminate or repeat. And the irrationals are just the numbers that don't do that. So for example, on this side, a rational number, you might have a half or a third or two or so on and so forth. For irrationals, we have numbers like pi, root two, root three, so on and so forth. And so what we need to realize is that there are actually more irrationals than there are rationals. And both of these are closely packed together. We usually think of the real numbers on a number line. And people tend to want to say, okay, there's zero, and here's one, and here's two, and here's three, and negative one, and negative two. Okay, that's fine. And then maybe they'll say, okay, and there's a half, and there's three halves. That's fine, too. But what you need to realize is no matter, <coughs> excuse me, no matter how far you zoom in, maybe we want to zoom in and just look between 0 and 1. No matter how far you zoom in between any two numbers, doesn't have to be 0 and 1, any two distinct numbers, there are actually infinitely many rationals and infinitely many irrationals. These numbers are packed so dense, it's almost impossible to wrap our minds around them. And so I guess my, my big advice to you is when you draw a number line, don't forget the irrationals. There is a pi sitting somewhere there. There is a root 2 sitting somewhere in here, uh, so on and so forth. So make sure that we realize the real number line includes rationals and irrationals, and these numbers are densely packed together. You pick any two numbers you want, and there are, whoops, there are infinitely many rationals and irrationals between those two numbers. So let's stop this video here and in the next video we will begin discussing functions.